Let us start. So please welcome my friend from Poland. He introduced himself in several minutes. And please welcome. Hey. So I'm Mateusz. Uh, I work as an Android guy at a company named AG. There was the office in Minsk, you probably know it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not from Belarus, I'm from Poland. AG moved the office to Krakow, and I happen to work there now. I'm also the member of the Google Developer Expert Program, and I co-organize the Google Developers Group uh, meetups in Krakow. I know you have a Google Developers Group here in Minsk, and you are even uh, organizing DevFest, so do you know it? Do you know GDGs? Raise your hand. That's cool. Plenty of you. So uh, today I'm going to give you the uh, something I call the ultimate guide to MVP on Android, uh, except for the fact that it's not true because there is no such thing as the ultimate way to do basically anything in engineering. So uh, how it should be properly introduced is basically uh, the random team's guide to MVP on Android that might work for your project or not. So uh, for those of you who are not doing MVP, I, ho I, uh, I hope this, uh, my, uh, my examples will somehow inspire you. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, for those of you who have more experience than me on this topic, I probably will kill my ass and basically I will, you will teach me something. So uh, yeah, uh, all the implementations of various architecture patterns are different than varies on the project. So uh, just do not throw potatoes on me in case you do not agree with something. Just raise your hand and tell me I'm wrong, and that's fine. So uh, minimum valuable product. And now everything is leaving the room because they were accepting model view presenter, right? No, just kidding. OK. <laughs> so model view presenter. Uh, before we get started to introduce it, like uh, let's take a look at the history briefly uh, to see what was basically the reason why it, uh, why it was created. So a uh, couple of years ago, and still some projects in some companies follow this approach, uh, spread business logic across the GSP pages. Anyone experience with GSP? Poor people. <laughs> now I'm too young, I'm too young for this, fortunately. But it was ouch. I've seen a couple of my life, a couple of uh, these implementations in my life, and well, you prefer to stay away from it. So then we had a model view controller, and it's like a kind of Android world, right? So you have a view, which is the XML file. There is no way uh, until the data binding was introduced. There is no way to basically put any business logic in uh, in your views. Then there is a controller which basically does everything. It's typically your activity or a fragment. And a model, usually in the PHP applications, this was a database, right? Usually on Android, this is a SQLite database and all the logic that's responsible for basically gathering the data and display it on your activity or somewhere. So uh, currently, you have like a couple of different approaches that aim to uh, fix the issues that uh, we had in the past. So we had like MVP, MVVN. Viper, probably mostly iOS guys, if any are here, are, uh, uh, know it. And whatnot, right? There are many different approaches to uh, many, many, different sh many different shortcuts, many different acronyms, many different approaches to basically uh, structure your uh, pre presentation layer. And for each of them, for MVP, MVVN, there are basically hundreds of understandings how one should properly implement it. So. There is no like one single way. So uh, why? You might ask, why do I need it, right? Uh, why, why do I need MVP? I will need to create multiple classes, multiple interfaces, and uh, versus I have just one activity that contains all the logic, right? I have a small freelance project, so it will not help me much. I'm creating a project for a customer I don't like, so after three months, uh, I will be able to forget about it. And it won't make my life any easier. So uh, not sure if it's visible, but basically this is more visible. This is Mount Everest. So you might ask, what Mount Everest and Himalayas have in common with coding? Any clue? Any ideas? 
I will show you. So uh, the third biggest mountain in the world is uh, Kanchenjunga, uh, something above 8,500 meters. Mount Everest, we all know it, is the highest mountain in the world. Uh, but in my previous project, we had a uh, new calendar activity, a new calendar invitation activity of 9,000 lines. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we used to name, we used to nickname, not name specifically, just to nickname our activity classes or like a content provider class with the mountain that basically was the closest in terms of height to the height of our class in terms of lines. So uh, why are uh, why is basically logic and putting logic in activities and fragment hard? Uh, w why it's wrong, right? It's hard to test. And let's face it, it's impossible to unit test the logic, almost impossible to unit test your logic if it stays in the fragment on the private methods and doing really many responsibilities. So uh, once you have it, people start to basically ignore testing at all, right? Uh, yeah, there are some classes that are like a pure functions and they got like a fixed input and some output for a given parameters. They could be easily unit tested, but people just say, yeah, you know, but why to write the test at all if majority of our logic is basically sitting inside of activities or fragment, so half of a percent of the code coverage and covering some non-critical code will not change anything. So people tend to not test their applications automatically at all. And uh, yeah, multiple responsibilities. So uh, who saw an activity doing a network request in async tasks? Who saw an activity doing a raw content provider or database queries? Raise your hand. Like basically we all seen that and we all seen the combinations between all of these two in a single activity, right? So they are growing, growing, growing bigger and the new developers come to the company, all developers leave, add a new code to you and then you get a Mount Everest. Uh, so uh, there are like, a, speaking of our implementation that I will introduce you in a minute, uh, I would like to mention one thing before you actually ask. So there are a couple of frameworks that help you perform the AVP architecture in your project. The most popular one is most likely Mosby, and we decided to not use it in our project, and I will tell you why. I'm not sure if this will fit your needs, because Mosby is actually a good library, and it's a library, not the framework, which means that it's not like you are starting to use Mosby and then you have no choice. All the application needs to be structured according to it. However, it still influences your design a little bit and the way they are retaining presenters and the way they are basically uh, architecturing their presenters uh, didn't fit really our needs because we wanted to use dagger scoping for that and I'm going to tell you about it as well. So the stuff we use, we use Rx Java because everyone uses and loves Rx Java today. Yeah, and uh, dagger too because everyone loves and likes dagger too, right? And uh, of course, a bunch of different other libraries uh, that are not relevant in this presentation because they are not relevant to our architecture. So, uh, oh yeah. So let's go through uh, let's go through le each letter that we have in the pattern, and this is how I understand it, how my project understands it, and how we implement it. So view. We probably all agree on it. It should be as dumb as possible. It should know nothing. So in our implementation, even adapters are set from presenters. So views and view methods are basically one-liners uh, that are just delegating the data that is received and processed by presenter beforehand and just putting on the text view or whatever. So view delegates the user's behavior to the presenter. So whenever you find an item on the spinner, you click on the item, you click on the list item, you do whatever, everything is delegated to presenter. So again, the listeners that we have on our views is still like a one-liner uh, that just invokes the corresponding method on your presenter. And uh, this is no one-liner. Animations on Android can be a little bit tricky, but uh, in our implementation, views are, in, are performing animations. That's their uh, that's their responsibility. So, ba so, so basically the responsibility of our views is inflating the view that is in XML and then performing some animation. So whenever you are 
calling some view method from your presenter, if you decide that this should result in some fancy animation, it's a view responsibility to do that. And view implements an interface, and uh, the, reason for, uh, the reason for that is pretty simple. So basically having an interface for review lets us do better unit testing for, uh, for our presenter. So we can easily mock uh, easily mock our uh, our view inside of the presenter, which might ring a bell because you still mock uh, concrete classes whenever whatever mocking framework you are using, but it's a bit harder if you are mocking if you are mocking like a fragment or uh, or activity and views uh, in our implementation. I basically activities fragments or custom views uh, that are implementing some certain interfaces responsible for, uh, for the behavior. So controversy, you might agree on that or not, but our goal is to not unit test our reviews. Why? Because what we want to achieve is to make such tests useless. So we move the log all the logic out of the views, so all you have in the views is like a text view, set text, and you might agree on that or not, but I feel there is no need to have a unit testing for that. You have like a functional test that are basically testing your UI if everything behaves correctly, but there is like a no big reason for like mocking your text view or uh, using a RoboElectric and just verify if uh, if the set text is working properly. So uh, as for the presenter, it's basically glue code between the view and the rest of the, uh, and the rest of the code. So uh, it gets the data from it gets the data from uh, another layer from like the application layer and converts it to the format that uh, is acceptable by it's acceptable by the view. So for example, you have a repository object that represents all the data associated to the repositories you can view on GitHub. On the other hand, you have just a simple list that displays just the name of the repository. So what the presenter is doing, it's mapping the entire object, extracting only the string and passing the data to the view so it only fits the view needs, nothing more or less. Uh, our presenters are retained before, uh, between the configuration changes. So uh, we all know how Android works. You swipe your screen and then for uh, many apps nothing happens because it's blocked and for uh, uh, for the properly uh, done applications, probably, and some applications that are, are not using it for uh, for the design purposes, it's basically adjusting a new layout, right? And it's creating a new instance of the activity. So you need to remember to store your state. Or in, I came from the loader, content provider, fragments and activities world uh, very recently. So what we are using, we are using loaders to basically load data from content providers. And uh, this was kind of a solution, right? Loader manager, uh, who is keeping your loader references, is basically retained on the, con on the, uh, on the, on the configuration state, uh, changes, right? So when you are swiping your, when you are rotating your screen and then you are performing the init loader inside of your own create of your activity, then your data almost immediately comes back which makes it possible to retain your list positions and, and stuff like that. User doesn't need to wait to load your data again. So uh, in a nutshell, it's basically everything that uh, in non-MVP apps and is staying inside of the fragments that is not strictly related to the view. So uh, all the stuff, all the processing data that it's taken from the database to display it on the inside of the adapter this is what this presenter doing in our case. So another controversy. Our presenters doesn't implement an interface. Who of you implemented the MVP in your project? Raise your hand. Who is using interfaces for, uh, who is using interfaces for, uh, for presenters? Not many people, okay. Uh, use Dagger at the same time? Okay. So uh, we use Dagger as well. And using interfaces is basically forcing you to create the mapping, one-to-one -one mapping in your components or in your modules, depending on the Dagger version you are using, uh, of your interface to the concrete implementation. So that's one thing you need to do. And uh, 
for us, we had the discussion about it. It didn't change, uh, doing LAN interfaces didn't change almost anything from the unit testing per per, uh, perspective. We have almost entirely, almost in all the cases, in all the cases, we had the only one implementation of, uh, of the presenter for a given interface. So in runtime, there was only one configuration. Also in tests, when you are testing, uh, also in tests, you can easily mock your presenter if you, if you want, even if it's config class. So we decided not to do that, mostly because of the Dagger code we needed to write. Uh, I wrote a blog post about it. It will be on the slides. I will, ask, I will uh, put it on Twitter right after the presentation, so you can, you can click on the link and basically agree with me or not and argue with, in comments. Uh, looking forward to that. So uh, presenter versus Android SDK. So some people claim uh, that presenters shouldn't be using Android components. They should even remain in, the, uh, in a different module uh, that's like a pure Java module. Uh, well, I agree this is true for, uh, for model and for, uh, for the application layer, maybe. Uh, presenter is basically still a presentation layer, right? So sometimes you want to dispatch some stuff to your presenter that is not maybe using the Android SDK, right? The dispatching on start or on, on pulse, but it's actually showing that the presenter is going to be used only in the Android context. So also, presenters are sometimes, in our case, responsible for managing broadcast receivers uh, that, are, that are basically standing for some data and then dispatching the data, dispatching the data to the view. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a point, in our case, uh, to make it unrelated to the Android SDK. It would basically make our life harder without giving us like, uh, any, any real benefits. Uh, so model is basically a business data gathered from the application data layer. Uh, the real stuff happens here. So whereas the view and presenter is basically doing Android stuff and is delighting your user with the wonderful experience, displaying animation and stuff like that, the whole calculation and the business knowledge that you have happens here. Uh, in our case, it's not related to Android. We do not have any separate model for it as, uh, as for now. There is a separate package that keeps it, and uh, no Android SDK is used, not because we want to like seriously avoid it, just because we don't need it there. And uh, basically, the model starts with some interface that left for like, some business process. So basically, what you inject to your presenters is really some kind of the interactor that you invoke, and uh, then operate with model that is being returned from it, for example. And uh, yeah, uh, and basically the whole application layer that stays behind the presenter is like a combination of, of, of a different classes, of a different approaches. So you basically have a separate concept, separate type of classes for getting your data from, the ret from retrofit. You have a different type for like a getting data from the database, different type for doing some calculations and, and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, whenever you are starting with the, implement, with the implementation of AVP, you need to find your goal, and our main goal was the stability. So all we did is basically, and w you need to, we needed to have a point to stop with layering our software, right? You can go up with layers, have like a 17 layers to do some proper operation, but there is some point you need to, ha you need to tell uh, that, okay, this is enough. So our goal was the stability, and we are doing a code so it will be easily uh, testable. And once we were there, we said, okay, it's fine. We'll leave it like here. It was is it simple enough to maintain and simple enough to test. Everyone is satisfied. So uh, how it works is view uh, is talking to presenter. Presenter is talking to staff. Staff is basically everything related to our application logic, right? So it's SVP now. And uh, view delegates the methods like on item selected to presenter, uh, while presenter is telling the view, for example, if model changes, presenter is telling your view, okay, for this particular spinner, please select position number four. And this is all view knows about. View doesn't, in many cases, doesn't really know what kind of data is displaying. Uh, 
presenter on the other way talks to staff and talks uh, in, a, in the case of, uh, of our application, we can change the markets that are trading applications, right? So you are talking to, you, you are talking to your model, telling him, okay, user wants to, ch uh, user wants to change, uh, change the market, and then model communicates with, uh, like interacts or communicates with, uh, with the presenter using the observable. So for at each graph that is presenting the MVP to you, there is a, like a fixed line between the presenter and the model because the presenter knows about the model. Model doesn't know about the presenter, but uh, it has a way to communicate about changes and we use the Eric's observables for that. So uh, again, how many, uh, how many of you block the uh, app orientation in your, uh, change orientation in your app? Okay, a couple of you. Uh, but it's not the, not the only case now, so, uh, so better listen. So uh, in Android N, uh, there will be this multi-window system, and multi-window system will basically, if you enable it, it will entirely disable blocking the orientation for your app. So when it's enabled and your users want to split the screen to see your app and see Gmail on the right side, uh, if in order to enable that, you will need to unlock the, uh, the orientation genders. This is the Android N's behavior. So uh, we use Dagger scopes, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, to basically uh, keep our presenters. For those of you who are not very familiar how Dagger scopes, uh, scopes work, scopes are a local singleton. Local singletons in terms of like a, of the component, right? So as long as you are keeping the component in your app if in a memory, the same instance of the scope provider of the uh, of the object you want to inject will be returned. So there is one default scope in Dagger 2. Uh, it's called a uh, singleton. Uh, you might use it in your app. You might define your own, and that's what we did. So this is how our structure of Dagger works in our project. So we have the application component. Uh, is being initialized in, uh, in custom application class. It keeps all the singletons that, are, that need to leave as long as the application leaves. Uh, session component is uh, basically a stack that keeps the data related to the session. So uh, we do not store the credentials on the phone, on the device. Everything stays in the memory once you kill the application, you need to relog again uh, for, in term, uh, for uh, security purposes. So what we do is basically we have the object representing session, we got all the tokens, and then uh, it's being provided by the session component. So basically when we are doing a logout or we are switching the environment, all you need to do is to kill the previous session component and create a new one, and everything will be injected automatically again. A known configuration component is our main actor here I will talk, to, I will talk about. So uh, this is a component that it's uh, scoped in a way it lives between the orientation changes. So whenever you want to have a component that lives between two activity instances once you rotate on one single screen, uh, then, uh, then, you need to then you need to scope your class uh, using the scope that is being defined with a uh, known configuration component. Uh, so, how many of you know this method? Okay, so, uh, get last non, oh, sorry, it's not get last con non configuration scope, it's get last non configuration instance. So, this method, instance instead of scope, raise your hand. Good, plenty of you. So, uh, it's a method that's basically used by fragment, by activity to retain the fragment manager and loader manager in the framework. And it's deprecated uh, when you try to override it. It's not deprecated because it will be removed anytime soon. It's deprecated just because they want, don't want you to break the fragment manager and loader manager behavior. Uh, fortunately, uh, in uh, App Compat, we have now get last custom non configuration, which uh, fortunately is not deprecated anymore and you can use it to return uh, different instances of your object to retain them on the orientation change. And I'm talking here about the exact same instance. So it's not the, par it doesn't need to be parcelable, serializable, it's not serialized anyhow. It will be the exact same instance 
uh, you might want to have. Uh, back in a time, back, back in a time, uh, Mosby was using Mosby was returning presenters by keeping some uh, by keeping some static fields that were cleared after some time. Uh, currently, Mosby also switched to that behavior. Uh, and uh, if you decide to keep your presenters, they are keeping your presenters uh, using this method. So there is no w no risk of leaking your memory or not clearing the reference to your presenter uh, after you kill the screen. So uh, retaining presenters that at the same time are keeping the view state basically killed on safe instance state code uh, that we had in our fragments and activities. So on our presenters, we have usually we have a simple method set view. So whenever your fragment activity, your fragment or activity is being destroyed, you set you use, you set you set view to null. So you are clearing the reference. The new activity, new fragment appears. You set it to actual instance, and immediately you need you uh, notify the new uh, uh, the new view about the data that was already retrieved. Uh, during the previous uh, previous uh, cycle, almost there is still some stuff we keep in the on safe instance state. So it's a uh, it's a small line. It's mostly UI related for terms of animations and stuff like that. So uh, code or didn't happen. Uh, I created a small GitHub project that basically present how it all works. Uh, it's very simple. So I will show you how the application works at the beginning. So there are like a two different activities. One is like a clicker. So I'm going here. We have a view of one button displaying some data. I click, bam, 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 bam. You change the orientation, and uh, automati automatically all the data that you had before that was kept within the presenter in this case is basically stored. And there is no on a save instance state for that. All we need is to inject the new presenter and set a view on it. Uh, the other thing, it actually requires the internet connection, but I will talk. I will Try my chances. So, oh, anyone can anyone can make a hotspot for me? <laughs> okay, let's do it like this. Uh, just to show, let's uh, blah blah blah. People's presenter, so it's here. So instead of this, let's make like that. Uh, one repo, second repo. Okay, so. We probably need to emulate that it's basically some serious work, so let it be time five seconds. All the all the observables that we have are being uh, are observing on the main thread, and yeah. So let's do it like this. I hope it works. Okay. Okay, five seconds. Wow, it's shown. All right, so as you can see, it took five seconds to load the data, so it's like almost a fake internet connection. And uh, once you switch the screen, it's already cached. And there is no another, uh, there is no, uh, uh, and there we don't make any uh, any different network call, right? So how it works? Uh, I believe. Uh, do you can you see? Uh, is it visible enough, or should I change to the to the light uh, color scheme? It's okay. So uh, first of all. Uh, our presenter is uh, configured with uh, non-configuration scope. In terms of this project, uh, we created a base activity uh, that basically 
has one utility method like here. That's returning the injector. And as you can see, injector is being uh, restored over here inside of onCreate. And when your activity is being destroyed in order to create a new instance for your new orientation, for example, or a new language, whatever part of the configuration, we are retaining the injector over here. So it will be the exact same, uh, the exact same instance. So this is how uh, this is how the component works. So it's just scoped. Uh, it just scoped with uh, with this non configuration scope. So now, when you go to the repos presenter, uh, we created a behavior subject because it fit our needs in here. Uh, it kind of emulated what we wanted to achieve with lists and the network request. So whenever you are constructing your presenter, so it basically happens when your activity starts for the first time after being destroyed for the last time. We are scheduling. We are scheduling some network calls, some database query, whatever, and we are delegating this to our behavior subject that never completes. Because once behavior subject completes, you can refer. It doesn't have a value. You get value returns new, and basically you cannot subscribe to it anymore. I mean, you can, but you will receive the incomplete immediately. So. Uh, we are dispatching this to uh, to this behavior subject, and when you are setting the view, we are getting the view subscription. It's usually a composite subscription that we put all the subscriptions related to the view, and then we then we clear the subscription, so the previous view will never get another call again, and then uh, and then we subscribe to it. So. We take it to the, uh, we go to this behavior subject, and e on the schedule is immediate. We basically wait what was the last result. So the last result is actually cached. We do not care about the previous ones. So for example, in case our, in case our interactor basically pushed multiple updates through the observable, we care only about the last one. So this is very similar to how loaders work. By example, for example, without all the health code you need to write in order to make loaders calls. So, uh, how many of you implement, implemented, have implemented your own loaders? Yeah, a couple of you, so you probably know about this on start loading and doing the fourth load and checking the cache and all the stuff that you need to, you need to do in order to basically make it work. Uh, here, uh, I feel like it's, uh, it's much cleaner because the only thing we need we need to uh, we need to annotate our our presenter that we want to keep with the non configuration scope, and it will keep all the data during the orientation changes. So, for example, how our reviews uh, how our reviews work. So, this is a repos view. I basically can either set the list or display an error, and we have uh, the injected presenter here. Once it's here, it's a set in view, it's clearing the view, and uh, it's setting the repos, right? In this case, actually, adapter is created here because it's just the adapter of a simple screen, uh, simple strings, and it's uh, and it's a pet project. So whatever happens inside of your inside inside of your network request, either this is an error, either this is a success, everything is cached. So we know. So let's assume that you are ch changing the orientation, and let's assume you are working on a very slow phone, so it takes time. Uh, or even on the Nexus 6, for me, it took two seconds sometimes. Uh, everything will be cached, even if it happened in the meantime. New view appears, receive the data immediately. Uh, OK, let's back to the presentation. So. Uh, the truth is that uh, will fail, and you will fail if you have no bigger experience with that. You will probably follow a lot of different approaches at the same time, and then you will realize that it didn't make sense at the beginning. But uh, if I can give you an advice, it's basically do not overcomplicate. Make whatever uh, make whatever works for you. And remember that no architecture, I'm MVP, MVV, and whatever you will put in your app will not make erase the hardest part of our work. So hacks to make Android work as you as you really want it any easier. So uh, it will not fix your memory leaks in the edit text as well. Uh, you are probably using Mili Canary, so 
it's whitelisted right now, but there was a problem. Nick, rem you remember, right, with this blinker, with this cursor, yeah. Uh, now you resolve all the problems you have with web views in case you have a web views uh, in your app. I feel sorry for you. I have the I, I have a lot of them as well, and uh, I lost much time to basically make them work. An architecture has only one job. Uh, architecture needs to answer questions. So uh, if you are adding a new stuff, good architecture tells you, guides you where to uh, where to keep it, how to implement it. Uh, in bad architecture, you ask yourself all the time how to do it. Right, so good architecture answers the question at the beginning, so you can start focus on your work instead of wondering how to structure all together for every single feature you are implementing. So make it fit, make it fit your needs. If you are starting iterate per program, discuss to make it work for your project and find your way. So, uh, questions. 